Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Bogdan, and I'm a product specialist here at Jonas Software. And I'm also joined today by Nisha, who is an account executive here at Jonas Construction Software. And today we're going to be going over our field time application for you. Uh, before I start, I just want to quickly go over some uh, housekeeping guidelines. So uh, just to point out, all attendees are muted for the duration of the presentation, just for a better listening experience. Uh, we also encourage you to maximize your screen so that you're able to see all the details over the course of the presentation. And uh, last but not least, uh, if you have any questions during the presentation, you can uh, address them in the questions box, and we'll be having a Q&A at the end of the presentation. All right, so just quickly before we start, I just want to give a little history of our company. So uh, Jonas Software was founded in 1990, and we're currently going into our 30th year of business. And since then, we've grown to over 100 employees. Uh, we serve over 1,300 customers with over 15,000 concurrent active users. And so what is Jonas Construction Enterprise Software? So uh, Jonas Construction Enterprise is a construction management software solution. It's fully integrated. So all the apps and all the modules you see here, they were all built around job cost, service, and accounting as the hub from day one. And so over the course of this webinar series that we're going to be doing weekly, we're going to be going over a lot of these apps and a lot of the features. And uh, just to keep in mind, everything is fully integrated. It works in one uh, software package. Um, everything was designed in-house. We don't pay any third-party licensing fees to other software companies. Um, everything was built from the ground up and uh, everything works uh, with each other. And so the app that we're going to be showing you today is our field time application. So what is field time? So field time is Jonas's solution uh, for time entry from the field. So it is a mobile friendly application. So it works with uh, an Apple, an Android uh, or tablets. And uh, it is a responsive design, so it works. Uh, it will conform to the size of the screen of whatever device you're using. And you can use any device with a mobile connection, uh, and you'll be able to save all of your work. So it is also a hybrid app. It works offline and online. So if you're in a dead zone and you don't have access to the internet, it's still going to save all of your information on your device, and you'll be able to complete your work and then sync back to the office once it's done. And so it's used for time entry in the field, so you can time entry or you can do crew time entry. If you're a site supervisor or a foreman, you can enter your time for your crew. You can also track costs such as um, your job units or uh, production quantities, as well as equipment usage against jobs. And you can also create daily logs directly out of your device. Additionally, you can also view time and location entry reports so you can better track productivity directly from your device. And it also has geofence functionality. So you can use mobile GPS tracking to help you ensure everyone is safe, productive, and in the right place at the right time. So you're basically able to see um, where your employees are when they're clocking in and clocking out. And uh, it's also fully integrated. So I'll be saying that a lot during this presentation, but essentially it has direct integration with payroll, with job costing, with your equipment management modules and your document management system. So there's no double entry. Everything is done from a single point of entry and that eliminates any rekeying of the data. So before we jump into the live demo, I just want to go over some common issues that contractors face with traditional uh, time tracking methods. So the first and foremost one being a human error. So uh, whether someone has messy handwriting or the project manager or payroll administrator can't read the person's handwriting or someone is writing down eight hours instead of seven by accident, that can be a problem with pen and paper time tracking methods. Also poor scheduling. So it's hard to effectively plan out your jobs because you aren't sure how many hours it will take as you can't see accurate hours for previous jobs, and also time theft. So you can't control how many hours are written on the paper, and unless you have a geolocation tool, it's hard to uh, prove that those hours are accurate. And that leads to the next problem, which is overpayments. So because of time theft, you're overpaying employees and your costs are higher, and therefore you may be losing money on jobs, and what's worse is that you might have a higher estimate for future jobs, and for this reason, you aren't getting awarded the bids. And last but not least, a more uh, contemporary issue is the COVID-19 social distancing issue. So it's hard with the pen and paper process uh, to, you know, keep distance from other employees. And so a remote solution is, is a lot better in that uh, situation. And so that leads me to the benefits of modern time tracking solutions, such as uh, Jonas's field time. So uh, the biggest um, benefit is, you know, determining productivity. So in the absence of a time tracking tool, you can't determine productivity and track if an employee is being productive compared to other employees or crews. And projects for this reason can quickly become subject to delays, cost overruns, and even cancellations. So being able to measure and track estimated time versus actual time is extremely crucial 
and it leads you to uh, you know more efficiently allocating your resources and uh, being more productive. Additionally, another benefit is eliminating double entry. So I mentioned this before, it's a fully integrated software solution. So a single entry point for all of your labor hours, uh, your equipment usage, your production quantities, all from a single point of entry eliminates the need to uh, rekey any of the data. And then the third benefit is minimizing lost revenue. So just to paint a picture, for example, let's assume that a particular construction project took 100 extra hours to finish out of a total of 4,000 hours. So in an ideal scenario, a project manager will identify that they underestimated the time needed to finish the project by two and a half percent. However, this is not always the case and similar underestimations may continue to occur. And that ultimately leads to a loss in revenue for the construction business. And so time tracking applications provide all the data that is necessary for a project manager to identify errors in time estimations. And the last benefit, and I think it's one of the most important ones, is providing added value to clients. So the more transparency you can provide your clients, the more they will trust you on further construction projects. So proper time tracking and daily log functionality builds the relationship between the sub, the GC, and the owner, and that ensures future business and future collaboration. And lastly, I just wanna talk about the importance of daily logs, which I think uh, a lot of us take for granted. And uh, as you may know, a construction daily log is used to record the everyday progress on construction projects. And so it's important for a number of reasons. Uh, first and foremost, dispute resolution. So just to throw some stats at you, um, according to Plan Academy, just in 2019, the overall cost for the construction industry due to legal disputes was $42.8 million. On top of that, a legal conflict can on average last for 14 months. So these stats show that disputes is one of the main points for the industry, main pain points for the industry, sorry, and daily logs can be obje an objective source of truth and aid in resolving these conflicts. Additionally, an important aspect is standardization. So every construction project is different, but that doesn't mean that a new scenario that is seen now will not show up in the future as well. So once the information about the scenario is documented in a daily log, everyone will be able to go back and review the information at any time in the future. And this will save workers time. And since time is money, quite a bit of money can be saved as well. And the last important function of a daily log is changes. So if there are any employees leaving or being promoted on construction job sites, these daily logs are a great place for a person to start as they're learning about the project, determining, determining what has been done already, and finding out what needs to be done in the future to keep everything on track and on schedule. And so digital solutions have simplified the use of daily logs, so they've become easier to use, so you can submit, store, and retrieve crucial project information quickly and reliably. Uh, it's more accessible, you can easily access it from your fingertips um, you know, on your phone and update the report on site. And because you have more tools at your disposal and a lot of the processes are automated, so a lot of your hours and uh, you know, equipment usage gets pulled in directly into the daily log, you can be more precise with what information you include and track every detail of each project and know exactly what is happening on the job site at all times. And last but not least, uh, it's customizable as well. So you can adjust the daily log to meet your needs and display only the information that is pertinent to your job role. So you can create templates, and you can cater, uh, you know, determine how you want to see them and how you want to use them. And so, with that being said, uh, let's jump into a live demo of field time. So I'm going to uh, give this over to Nisha, and she'll be demoing the time entry functionality uh, of our field time app. So take it away, Nisha. Perfect. Thank you, Bogdan. So as Bogdan mentioned, I'm going to be demonstrating the field time application for you guys. As you can see. Um, the preview of this is on a mobile device because as Bogdan mentioned, we work with both Androids, iPhones, um, as well as tablets out in the field. So you can have it um, previewed in multiple ways. So I'm gonna go in and go ahead and start with the time and uh, the clocking in and clocking out functionality. As you see, uh, to start or clock in, you would essentially start the timer. This automatically populates defaulted um, information for instance company allocation type which is the job to what you want your uh, time to be associated to so once you've uh, clocked in the timer all will start and everything is going to be done in real time then you have two options available you, you can either pause or stop the clock pausing uh, the time essentially is for maybe an individual who's taking a break or maybe going on for lunch versus clocking out is stopping the timer so let's go ahead and click the uh, clock out button 
Once you do that, it'll prompt you a screen allowing asking you what type of entry you want to do. Keep in mind, this is just for our presentation purposes, but as a field time employee who's doing entering it, clocking in their, and clocking out on their own time, they will of course only see the single entry, but maybe a foreman is doing um, the time entry for you know, multiple people, they can also enter it in as a crew. The last option available to you here is the continue timer. So this is in case an employee accidentally clocks out, but they're not ready to be done with the day and they wanna continue the, the clock. So let's go in and actually click into the single entry. Once I click in, you'll see a, a new screen populated. As you can see in my screen, most of the information has already been defaulted for you. Of course, so you're not going in and re-entering in information in terms of uh, what you're putting the time against. All this information does not need to be there for your field time employee. This is just for demonstration purposes. You can keep it very simple or you can add additional information. Uh, for instance, you know, include equipment as well if you're putting it against the time. Uh, down here in the work details is where all your time is actually calculated. In our case, we did not let the time clock run, so we don't have any hours or break time available. But for instance, if we worked an eight hour shift, took a 30 minute break, you could see those details here in real time. Next, you could also include details. Uh, so we work really well with unions as well. You can have multiple unions set up. Again, this is not something that's necessary. It's just a field that we have available, but you do not have to include it. You can also have notes available for a customer as well as your payroll personnel as well. And lastly, we have an approver set up for this time entry. So within Jonas, if you, if you guys are a little bit more familiar with it, we have a great approval process. Even within the time entry field, you can have an approver. So what that essentially does is once I submit this time, the appropriate approver, in this case Nadine, will have this uh, entry uh, in their approver inbox and they will have to approve it before it goes into payroll for processing. So now once the appropriate information is uh, filled in, you can go back at the top and you'll see three options. The paper clip essentially here allows you to attach any documents for this time entry. And if you're maybe using it off your mobile device, it's maybe a picture of uh, the work you've done or a receipt. This uh, second icon right here with the arrow pointing up is allowing you to actually submit the time entry. And the last, um, icon right here with a check mark actually allows you to save the entry but not actually submitting it for payroll processing. So once you submit the entry, it will actually appear right here at the bottom with today's date. And as you can see, they'll have the information that we filled in and a status showing that it's been submitted. Once this time entry has been approved, the status will change to being approved. So that's using our clocking in and clocking out functionality. But you also have the ability to create a time entry manually by clicking the plus sign right here. And it'll allow you, of course, to choose either doing a single entry again, if you're doing multiple, maybe you're a foreman or a site super, as well as maybe a project manager who might want to uh, do a cruise time. So once we go into multiple, this is maybe an employee who's been working on multiple tasks, so they need more than one entry, or um, different employees working on the same job, same company, for instance. This screen will allow you to create everything right from here. You can click on this plus sign right here and it'll populate a similar screen as a single entry and it'll uh, auto fill or default to who we're doing the time for. So for instance, this is already filled in for our employee, the company that it's associated with, of course, and all the information is already filled in. Again, this is a setting that you can have. You can put in the amount of hours that they work. So let's say we give him eight hours of regular time and maybe we're going to give them two hours of overtime that they worked. We can Then what we can do is if a, a, the same employee has worked on a different job, for instance, you can actually just create a new uh, entry right here by clicking the plus sign, or you can copy it and uh, copy it if you're using the same information for a different employee. So we're going to go ahead and actually copy it over so we can see that. So once we click the copy, all the information that was pre-filled from the previous screen is already there. We can go ahead, of course, and change the employee. So maybe we're doing this time for Frank. Once we go down, all the information, like I said, is already filled in. But maybe for Frank, he only works seven full-time hours and he did no overtime. So once the employee has filled in all the um, entries that is needed, uh, of course, they would want to double check their work just in case, you know, any errors or any um, mistakes have been made, they can click on the symbol right here that looks like a hamburger and it will populate a time entries preview. So they can see what they've entered, the employees that they've entered it for, of course, and go through and see obviously all the information. 
They can also export this out into Excel by clicking this right hand corner and that will give them a preview in Excel. So now let's get out of this screen. And just before we exit out of this main screen, another thing to keep in mind is the settings that you can set up for an app. So the three asterisks right here on the right hand side allow you to set up the uh, settings within your app. So user preference allows you to uh, set up how you want your initial screen to look. So for instance, for a field employee who's just clocking in and clocking out, their initial screen would want to be the, uh, the time entry uh, screen. But maybe a project manager or a foreman want to have their uh, initial screen as maybe an approved time or forms because that's the first thing that they would like to complete, making sure they process everything over before they do to, uh, a new day's time entry. Second is user defaults. And this essentially um, allows you to set default fields to make it easier for an employee to clock in and out. As you saw in my previous screen, all, most of my information was already pre-filtered in, and that's because it was all defaulted to a company, a payroll code, for instance, cost type, things like that. And lastly, um, as I mentioned, we also work with crews. If you have a crew, um, to go and set up a crew would be under this setting as well. It allows you to set up crews for, and you can also set a default crew. Here you already see there are a couple crews set up, but if you wanted to go ahead and create a new crew, you can click on this plus icon here and it'll prompt you this screen, which will allow you to associate it to a company as well as payroll. Um, you always have an option of choosing a company because Jonas handles multi-company really well. So now you can see that there are many employees that show up. I can either click it individually if I wanted to choose specific employees or click the square right beside uh, the code and it selects all the employees for me. I could also set it as a default crew if I'd like and then of course I would save it. So that's uh, the main screen um, for the app. As I mentioned that we also have an approval process. So I'm gonna go through that now. Um, when you click on the left-hand side, it'll populate this menu and you can go into approved time. So this is more so maybe for a foreman or a project manager who has to go in and actually do the approved time. It will all be available here for the employee. And what they could do is either click in a single entry or they can uh, do it all at once, depending on their preference. Of course, a lot of times what they would wanna do is have the ability to go in individually and obviously click on it so they can make any adjustments or changes that might be required as well. And um, if they, they wanna attach a photo, so as you can see the screen populated, um, everything is already filled in, but you can make those changes if needed. If everything looks all right, you can either attach a, a, a document to this uh, entry, you can approve it by clicking the thumbs up or disapprove it by clicking the thumbs down. Like I said, that's going in individually to each time entry. But if you'd like to click on all of them at once and approve it or disapprove it, you can click on this square right here beside the employee code, and then you can do a thumbs up or a thumbs down. So that's uh, my part of the presentation. I'm going to pass it back on to Bogdan, who's going to continue the demonstration. All right. Thanks, Nisha. So I'm going to switch it over to an iPad view just to show you more of the functionality. So I'm going to jump into um, some of the other options that we have in field time. So one of them being uh, the creation of forms. So field time allows you to create your own forms for your employees to fill out as an administrator. So for instance, um, I have uh, an accident or injury form, maybe an abdominal reading form to fill out. So if I go in here, you'll see that you can create these different forms for them to fill out. And uh, once they're filled out, you can make certain fields mandatory. You can make them date fields. You can make them drop down boxes. So once they've uh, filled out this information, they can uh, simply select the upload button and that goes back to the office for review. Additionally, I want to touch upon the reports. So um, if we go into the reports uh, tab here, you'll see that you can run um, standard reports such as your time entry or your uh, employee locations report. And you can make your own reports as well and customize them and they'll be uh, listed under my reports. And so uh, once it loads up here, you'll see that all of your time entries will load. This is just a standard time entry report and you can filter all of this information in the different columns by clicking on the martini glass here and uh, you know filter the information to how you want to see it. If I want to see an employee locations report, I can select that and that ties into the geofencing capability. So you'll be able to see where the employees were when they were clocking in and clocking out. So you'll see a column here in this report that says on site. And so in there, there's going to be an icon um, notifying you if they have uh, the uh, GPS capability on their device um, if they were on-site or off-site. So if I click in on that, it's going to show me 
and it's marked in red. And that indicates that they were actually off-site, so they were at the local pub instead of uh, at the job site when they were clocking in and clocking out. So then I can take the appropriate action for that particular time entry. And so next we have um, our document integration. So uh, I mentioned that the Field Time app integrates with the document management system. And uh, you'll be able to, as an administrator, you'll be able to give your employees access to documents that might relate to the job. So maybe any kind of any drawings, any pictures, submittals, RFIs, those will all be available to them uh, directly from the documents tab. They're also going to be able to see their pay stubs directly from the documents tab as well. So that integrates with the payroll module and they'll be able to access them directly from their device. And so additionally, we have some other applications. And I mentioned you can record other costs in addition to your time entry. So I'm going to go into the equipment usage application first. So you might run into scenarios where on the job site, you might have a piece of equipment that's not an employee or operated by an employee, and you might want to record the usage separately from a time entry. Uh, so you can go into the record usage application. Uh, you can select the plus button to pull up the record usage uh, menu. And I'm going to pull up an entry here that I've already made. And so you fill out all the information. So I, I picked this uh, Doosan excavator as an example. You're also going to fill out all the uh, allocations just as you did with the time entry. So what job is it for? You know, what cost uh, item or task does it relate to? Uh, you're also going to select a cost type and a rental category. So these are all set up in your equipment management uh, module. Uh, so if it's a, you know, internally operated piece of equipment, you can set up the rental categories here. You'll also be able to set up how you're charging it out. So is it by hourly? Is it by daily? So in this case, I charged out four hours to this piece of equipment and it's going to pull up the rate directly from your equipment management module as well. And once again, you can also click the paperclip to attach a picture of the unit or maybe uh, a document. Um, and so this integrates directly back to the equipment and job costing module. So once again, this eliminates the need for any double entry or uh, rekeying of the data. Additionally, you can also record job units or uh, you can also call them production quantities. So let's say um, you know, you're, you're tracking, for example, maybe how many feet of pipe you laid that day for the job or how many cubic yards of dirt you moved that day on the job site. So you can uh, go into here and you can record the job units or the production quantity. So I'm going to pull up uh, one of the ones that I've already completed here or, or started, sorry. And you'll see here that it's going to pull up all of the uh, cost items that have um, an estimated quantity associated to them. So for instance, um, you know, you'll see here some of these cost items have, they, they all have estimated quantities already. They have a unit of measure and they have a to date quantity as well. So if I want to, you know, add some, uh, some quantities to date, uh, I can add some quantities for the day. So for instance, maybe I moved five yards of cubic dirt. I can update that and then I can send it off to the office for review. And once again, that's going to sync back to our job costing module. And if you're doing a progress billing in quantities, uh, that's also going to update that as well. So once again, it eliminates the need for any, any double entry or rekeying of the data. And last but not least, the daily log functionality. So I mentioned how important daily logs are uh, to the, to the uh, jobs that you're performing. So um, you can create daily logs directly out of your field time application. And so I'm going to pull up one that I've already started here. And it's going to pull in all of the time entries, all of the equipment usage, all of the employees directly from uh, what was entered for that day. So you don't have to rekey any of that information in. You'll also be able to uh, put in the weather information as well as any materials that were received or used on the job, any subcontractors and the work that was performed. So that's going to tie into uh, your subcontract module any safety issues, um, any additional work performed, and also some general information uh, that you can type in. So it's a free form field at the bottom here. And so once you're done doing that, you can attach maybe a picture of the job site or the work that was done to the daily log or any related documents by clicking the paperclip. You can hit the uh, little eyeball button if you wanna preview what that's gonna look like. And uh, you can create your own custom templates, um, you know, to depending on how you want to see your daily logs. So uh, we'll give it a second to just process, and it's going to give us a preview of what that's going to look like. And uh, you'll also be able to add a signature directly to the daily log. So here is uh, an example of a template I made. Not the prettiest template, but uh, uh, you know, it does the job. So you'll see here that uh, all the hours, all the equipment, all the information we keyed in um, has pulled into the 
uh, preview. And I've added a signature already, but you can go in here and click the little pencil icon. And I can key it in, in a name. So maybe you want to get the architect or the engineer to sign off on the daily log. And then you, I can put in a signature directly from the device. You can also email it directly out of here. You can upload it back to the office. And, um, and everything can be completed directly from your device. And so now that we finish with uh, field time, I'm going to go back into our um, core system. And I just want to show you how a project manager would, would see all these hours pulled in into their project views report. So if I go into my job costing module here, and I go into our project views report, which is primarily where a project manager using Jonas would be able to keep track of their jobs. I'm going to run this report. And keep in mind, I just want to show you this option at the bottom here to include unupdated payroll. So if that's checked off, it's actually going to include all the hours that haven't been posted to payroll yet. So you're going to be able to keep track of all unupdated payroll hours directly from your report, all in real time. So I'm going to run that report. And it's going to show you all of your jobs that you're currently working on. And so you'll see all the columns. Um, and all of this is drillable. So you can drill into any of this data if you'd like. And you're going to be able to see your estimated hours as well as your actual hours for the job. So that pulls in in real time. I can drill down into any of these fields and see a detailed breakdown of all of those hours if I wanted to. I can also go into uh, the job details by clicking on the little arrow next to the job. And that's going to give me a detailed analysis of the job. I can uh, click on the labor history button on the right hand side. And once again, that's going to pull in all of the labor history and all of the employee hours um, for that particular job. And that gives the project manager an overview and uh, an ability to keep track of all the labor history for that particular job. So that's how um, field time ties in. So I'm just going to go back to our slide here with our contact information. So we're going to move on to the Q&A session now. So if you have any questions, you can uh, fill those in. And actually, just before we do get into the questions, I did want to mention, um, if anyone is interested in doing a one-on-one -on -one demonstration as well, please feel free to reach out to us. Um, we also have weekly webinars starting. Um, so next week, we're actually do um, doing a webinar on the document management and the workflow. So you can definitely check that out as well. All right, and we'll give you a few seconds here to maybe add some questions if you have any. Um, so, um, Bogdan, I'll read out the questions and then you can, um, of course, answer them. So, is there the is there the ability to set a prover attached to job instead of a specific? Uh, I can't. One second, I'm just gonna. Oh, a specific employee. Uh, let me just take a look here. Sorry, is there ability to set a prover attached to job instead of a specific employee? Um, yes, you can uh, you can definitely do that in the administrative uh, section. So you can you can tie an approver to a job as opposed to an employee, definitely. And so the next question, I actually have a box here. I can see. Um, so when attaching documents to a daily report, is the format of the document uh, saved as a PDF? Um, it's actually saved in uh, whatever format that you upload it in. So our document management system has, um, you, you have the ability to store um, any kind of document. So it's it's going to be stored uh, depending on what format um, you're attaching it in. So it depends on what format you, you know, you, the, the file exists on uh, on your phone. Um, so it really depends on what you're, what you're storing it as. So it can be any format. Um, and the last question that I have here is, can the field app generate the weather automatically? Um, I don't believe so. No, I think that that, that would be a manual process. So you have the, the fields and the buttons laid out there and you would have to fill that out uh, manually. So unfortunately, as of right now, there's no automatic way to uh, generate the weather automatically. So it looks like that concludes all of our questions. So um, yeah, if there's any other questions that you, that you guys might have, you know, feel free to reach out, uh, book a, you know, a demo for one-on-one -on -one with uh, with any of us. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for joining us today. And we're gonna have this uh, webinar series on a weekly basis. Uh, so the one for next week is gonna be on our document management system.
Um, so if you're interested in that, definitely sign up for the next week's webinar. And uh, once again, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, everyone.